we haven't really in this talk treated it as an engineering problem that you and I are going to solve. In other words, you were not ending this talk with Ron's perfect solution. Right? <laughs> Instead, I'm trying to direct your attention to places where in the design you can put your attention. Yes. And especially places that may have been hard to access because you were proud of them. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, but if we look at your existing things, and right now I'm looking at the options and the abilities. The options and, and whatever. Wait, wait, wait. Let me find it. Right. Talents, themes, mm -hmm. and perks, and abilities, and all those things. Because I put effort into those when I picked this character. I put yes. effort into which perks, right? I thought about which ability. Yeah. So if I know that those are going to introduce randomness into the situation, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Yes. The roles and the basics are already taking care of the stability. Yes. And that, so, not only, right. so all those things that I choose, think of them as destabilizers. Yes. And because that is a much... The stable situation is that I lose. That's the, right. my idea. Right. The stable situation is I'm going to lose. Absolutely. So let's break it, the stable. Yes. Good so, summaries. It and, and in, however, instead of just shifting the stability up and down the scale of the curve, yeah. instead of doing that, I said introduce the contingency with these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll find people excited to do that rather than scared. Yes. And yes. so that's what I'm hoping or anticipating. Um, yes. And exactly how much is too much and all the rest of it. Well, that's your problem, but it's not a bad problem to have. No. Right. no. So um, with, with that in mind, there's a couple, let me, I know I have a couple of other notes here. Ah, the notes on the back. All right. Let's say your game mm -hmm. was really, really stupid in certain ways, which is that I have my simple role and you have your simple role. I've got my defense and you've got your defense. And when we roll, it's just the difference. If I get over your defense, it's the difference. Or you get over my defense, and it's the difference. And then I say, well, I guess I have to spend that much energy. Right? Okay. Now, when is this fun? So all the other things, I mean, you can't get more stable than that. I'm only ever going to roll those dice. You're only ever going to roll those dice. And mm -hmm. hell, let's make it uh, roll six die six and keep three. So we are talking about like the most stable possible medium. Yes. Right? yes. Really stable medium. We have this. And, uh, and now the question is, when is this fun? And I am saying that you can either, uh, how am I going to put it? If you put in options by which I can stay safer and safer and safer, that I can become more and more secure that I'm only going to take those few points so that if he's better than me, I can tilt, I can, you know, I, I can change my die side so now I'm even again. Right? Yes. If uh, he's better than me, then I can choose this option, and that puts us even again. Yeah. I'm suggesting that that's not good for your game. Mm -hmm. that, that what we're looking for are in the existing system, with no additional mechanics, in the existing system, what happens so that things become more unclear. Do you remember or more more uh, risky? Mm -hmm. Do you remember from my talk with Justin that yeah. one of my big points in Champions Now, which as the hero system evolved, became probably one of the most egregious grinds down systems in all of gaming. 
right? One of the worst grind it down, grind it down, grind it down. Everybody takes two points of stun, three points of stun, two points of stun, three points of stun, and finally we get the bad guy under his zero, right? Yes. And so it was one of the worst for that, the way the system had evolved. So when I went back to the beginning version of the game and started playtesting my way through it, one thing that quickly became clear is that bat fights' outcomes were a lot less predictable back then. So I made sure that in the way that this new game works, that you can start, and it's in the beginning of the fight, that the predictable outcomes occur. Mm -hmm. And okay. as the fight progresses, decisions and unpredictable outcomes, like where you've been knocked back, Right? Yes. How much yes, endurance yes. did you blow unpredictably when you push to power? You have to roll dice to see how much energy you spend if you push your power. I mean, you've got yes. an energy blast. If you want to hit that whole area with the energy blast, you have to push it. Now, the amount of endurance to spend to do that just became unpredictable. So, therefore, the finishing phases when everybody's low on endurance, mm -hmm. when everybody is in positions that they didn't really plan on, when certain lucky and unlucky things have happened, when a presence attack has changed an important character's mind, now what does the end of the fight look like? Because you don't have the resources you had when you started. And everything's changed. I like this. Right. It's, I mean, so that's what I'm for looking me. for in your game is that the predictability, the stability in the beginning of the fight gets eroded. That gets eroded. It's so eroded is the wrong word because it sounds like you just go down and down and down and down. No, no, no. no. Right, but, but the stability itself has started to shift around. But in that case, since there were causes at each step, you don't feel as though you've just injected the exploding die chaos. Yes. Instead, yes. you're saying this is how it turned out this time. And the a good example to go to the classics. And this is a scene that nobody seems to remember from the books. So I'm going to the fantasy, the fantasy <laughs> classics. At the Battle of Helm's Deep in The Lord of the Rings, there is a sequence where Aragorn is outside of the fortress gates fighting orcs. And everybody is falling back into the fortress to defend it. And they're closing the doors. And the orcs are coming up in a wave, right? They're coming up the, the steps in a wave. Aragorn is fighting on the steps, and he's looked behind him, he's seen the distance, the, it's really well told in the books, he looks behind him, he sees the distance, everybody's like closing the door and saying, come on, we're ready, he sees the distance, sees how close the orcs are, decides to kill a few more, that that will help, if I can clear out this little batch of them, then I can make it back up the steps and get in, right? No problem. He does it. He kills the orcs, turns, and starts running up the steps, right? Yard, a few meters ahead of the orcs coming. Everything seems fine. Do you know what happens in the story right there? I don't remember correctly. Though. Right. It's a very... People forget it. He trips. Uh, yeah. He yeah. just trips on the steps. Aragorn, Master Ranger trips on the step as he's running up in a panic. Well, not a panic. It, was, it wasn't a panic. Now it's a panic. Right? Now it's a panic. And he even describes, he even says, he falls on the steps in full armor. And he doesn't mean the armor protects him. You actually feel it in your teeth when you're reading it what it must be like in plate armor to fall just you are sprinting up steps and you caught your toe and you go down on your face in plate yeah. armor and you just yes. feel it you just feel it you're like oh ooh, that hurts 
Yes. And so yes. then the next paragraph is he sprints to the door and they shut the door right in the front of the orc's swords. And you just, with that, the, the sequence is only a page long. Mm. It's not told in 50 pages. It's a page yeah. long. And it's just that right then you don't say, oh, that couldn't happen. Aragorn's too dexterous. Mm -hmm. You don't say, uh, you know, that's okay. He's got plenty of hit points. No. You don't say any of that stuff. You say, oh, fuck. That's what life is like. You know? That's what it's yes. like to be a hero. It sucks. And it might not even work today. So what I like to point out is that the problem with games that rely on what would statistically be the most likely, let's make sure that's the most likely thing in play. You know that logic, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The problem with that is that they will never produce that scene. Yes. Because today do. is not the statistically most likely day. If it were, yes. it wouldn't be in the story. Yes. Another example I kind of used was planning. Because I think that's the idea. I need to make sure that the mechanic turn make it real. But the idea behind the energy that uh, when you are hitting Dungeons and Dragons, for example, you lose a certain amount of hit point and nothing. I mean, this huge giant hit, him, hit you with a, a right. tree that is yeah. swinging like yeah. and nothing is happening. So I want you to spend your energy and describe what you do because what I want you to focus is on I'm losing something to avoid something horrible from happening to me. For example, there is this scene in Indiana Jones, I think in Temple of Doom, where he just rushes through a door, is collapsing, and he, loses, and he puts the hand under the door, and he picks back the app. And it's a very incredibly risky action, but uh, uh, we, we are excited in seeing that because uh, it's in the movies, you know, the come out uh, kind of unskated of the city, you know he is not going to lose his under the door. But you want to see him risk something. Right. You want that to happen. So I think that in your example with Aragorn, what, really, what I was thinking while we were talking was that you need to have these events, uh, many of these events that the heroes survive right. rather than a single similar event. Because they're, good, because they're good at these things and uh, yeah. most of we're used to them being good at these things. Yeah, yeah, but it's sooner or later will come the time when it's not going to be that easy, right? Yes, right. Yes, of course. And but you want them to go. I mean, you want to see them stumble mm -hmm. and risk their life a lot of time, even if then they don't die, rather than seeing them being fine all the time, except that one. Time, right. I don't want. That. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're, what I we're don't working want. against. So with yeah. this in your mind, with this as your principle in mind. You can kind of go back to your, your, your build. You can go back to mm -hmm. your character build all the way back and say, mm -hmm. what am I choosing for my character builds? There are certain things that we choose that set up the stability. How dexterous am I? Right? Mm -hmm. How, you know, how do I point my dice? How do I set it up so that I know this is the baseline, the foundation of my character? Mm -hmm. And then you say, mm -hmm. what are the aspects of what I do that introduce productive uncertainty into the situation? Mm -hmm. right? what, and those are my risk factors. Those are what do I do where I take on some risk, but some things can happen that will get me off that cycle. Like you said, if we stay with the stability, I'm going to lose. So yes. what are the things that I do? that can get me off of that ride to death, right? But you do it not by equalizing, but by introducing more risk. Now yes. we're talking really strong design and a fun play. 